This is MathHeals.com. If you want to find uh, more YouTube uh, videos, uh, links to them, that is. Um, let's take a look at simplifying rational expressions. Now here's an example of a rational expression. So this is a rational expression. Not that I can spell. Try that again. Now rational basically means single fraction. And specifically when we're talking about a rational um, expression, you'll have uh, x's in there. So you have a binomial, maybe a trinomial, you'll have um, x's of some sort. Could be just a single number. This could be 1 over 2x plus 5, and that'd be considered a rational expression. Now the this uh, problem says find a value for which a rational expression is undefined. Well, a, a rational expression is undefined when the bottom part's equal to 0. So what we do to find out where it's undefined is we set the denominator equal to 0 and solve it. So here I'll take the 5 over to the right side, becomes a negative 5. Divide both sides by a 2. Those 2's cancel. And we get x is equal to negative 5 halves. If I put negative 5 halves in for x up here, I'm going to get a 0 in denominator. So this is the value we cannot have. But that's what they're asking for. Find a value for which it's undefined. Let's take a look at the next one. We've got 8x minus 3 over x to the third minus 7x squared plus 12x. <coughs> Remember what I said on the previous problem. To find out where it's undefined, you set your denominator equal to 0. So we'll set x, square, x to the third minus 7x squared plus 12x equal to 0. Now since this is uh, x squared or higher, then we're going to have to use the zero factor property. So we're going to factor out GCF first. They all have an x in common. And that leaves us x squared minus 7x plus 12 equal to zero. Now what's inside the parentheses is the PSD method. x squared x, no x, and there's no number in front of our x squared. With the PSD, we take our number at the end, the 12, and we come up with our three columns. P, uh, we write down all products to give us 12. We got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Add them. 1 plus 12 is 13, 2 plus 6 is 8, 3 plus 4 is 7. In the difference column, we subtract them. 12 minus 1 is 11, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. Now the number we're looking for is 7, which is right here. So we're going to use 3 and 4. <coughs> now our larger number in the P column that we're going to use, which is 4, is always going to be the same size as the middle term, which is negative. The number I circled is in the S column, S for same sign, so if this one's negative, then this one has to be negative. Well, zero factor property. Uh, you get zero on one side, you factor the other side, you set each factor equal to zero. So I'll set x equal to zero, x minus 3 equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. Take the negative 3 over, it becomes a positive 3. Take the negative 4 over, it becomes a positive 4. These are the values for which it's undefined. If I plug those back up in my problem, I'm going to get a 0 in denominator. Grab a drink here. And let's look at our next problem. Mm -hmm. 3. We got um, 4x plus 16 over 4. And this is simplifying rational expressions. Mm -hmm. Now this first one's kind of simple, so it... Um, 
there's not a whole lot of steps to see here like you might see in some of the other ones. But uh, step one, back to the top, back to the bottom. Well, the bottom is four, so I can't do anything with it. But the top part I can factor out of GCF, because they both have a four in common. So I'll factor out a four, and that gives us x plus four, like that. And then step two in, sim in simplifying rational expressions, cancel if possible. Now these fours will cancel, so I can cancel those, and we're left with x plus 4 as our answer. Let's talk about these fours canceling. Up here in our original problem, we couldn't cancel these fours. And the reason why is there's a plus here. Everything has to be multiplication free to be able to cancel. Since we got 4x plus 16, we can't cancel the fours. Down here though, we got 4 times x plus 4. Since this is 4 times that, that's why we can cancel the 4s. Yeah, let's look at some, a little bit more exciting problems. <clears throat> We're going to do the same, same th two steps. And I don't know why I circled that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> So I get 10x to the third minus 5x squared over 5x squared. It's tempting to cancel these 5x squared, but again, there's a minus here. Everything has to be multiplication free to cancel like that. So our first step is to factor everything. Now the top part has a GCF in common. Has a, both have a 5 and both have an x squared. So I'll factor that out. Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2. We had 3x's, took 2 of them away, so that leaves us a single x. Minus 5 divided by 5 is 1. We had 2x's, took both of them away, so there's no x's left. Like that. Now, step 2, cancel if possible. Notice um, after I've factored it, I have a 5x squared here and a 5x squared here. Those are going to cancel. <coughs> and our answer is 2x minus 1. Now what allowed me to cancel there is since this was 5x squared times 2x minus 1, that's multiplication. Up here I had a minus between these, so that's why I couldn't cancel them. <coughs> Let's look at our next problem. Let me start a new page. And we got x plus 5 over x squared plus 17x. <coughs> plus 60, excuse me. Same two steps. We want to factor the top, factor the bottom. Bottom, or top we can't do anything with, but the bottom is the PST method. X squared, X, no X, no number in front of the X squared. With a PST, we're going to take our number at the end, which is 60, and we're going to come up with our three columns. Write down all products, give us 60. 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10. Add them. 1 plus 60 is 61, 2 plus 30 is 32, 23, 19, 17, 16. Subtract them. Smaller from larger. 60 minus 1 is 59. 30 minus 2 is 28. 17, 11, 7, and 4. <coughs> the number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 17, which we actually have in both columns. But since our number here at the end is a positive, positive 60, the only thing I'll give you a positive is when your signs are the same. So this is 17 I want. So we're going to use 5 and 12. Now our larger number, which is the 12, is going to be the same sign as the middle term always. So that's positive. Number I circled in the S column, S for same sign. So if this one's positive, then this one's positive. And step two, cancel if possible. See how we have an X plus 5 here and X plus 5 here? Those are going to cancel. And we're left with 1 over 
x plus 12. Now the reason why we can cancel at this step here is since this is x plus 5 times x plus 12. It's multiplication. That's why we can cancel those. Let's look at number 6. We have 9 minus x and we have x minus 9. Well, the top part is in the wrong order. Before we start factoring, we have them in standard form. So I'm going to rewrite that. So I'll become a negative x plus 9 over x minus 9. Now, the bottom part has nothing in common. top part really has nothing in common, but my first term is negative. And our GCF says if your first term is negative, then you want to factor out a negative. So I'll factor out a negative 1, and that gives me x minus 9. Step two, cancel if possible. See we how we have x minus 9 here, we have x minus 9 here. Those are going to cancel. And our answer will be negative 1. <coughs> Let's look at number 7. We got 6x to the third minus 30x squared over 15 minus 3x. Well, the top part is the GCF. They both have a 6 in common and they both have x squared in common. The bottom part is the wrong order. So on top part I'll factor out a 6x squared and um, that leaves me an x here minus 5. Bottom part I'm going to rewrite as negative 3x plus 15 put in the right order. Now once I have it in the right order, I can factor out a GCF. Because they're both divisible by 3 and my first term is negative. So I'll factor out a negative 3 and that's going to give us x minus 5. <coughs> that was uh, step 1 I guess. Step 2, cancel if possible. Well they both have an x minus 5 so those cancel away. Now if you have numbers, you, you treat those just like normal. Like 6 and 3, they're both divisible by um, by 3. So that gives us, um, well let me show it. This and this both divisible by 3. So um, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And th negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. And 2x squared divided by negative 1 gives you a negative 2x squared. And that's our answer. And let's look at our next problem. This one's a little bit more interesting. We got x squared minus 25 over x squared plus 13x plus 40. Well, I want to factor. The first step is to factor the top, factor the bottom. The top is dots, difference two squares, two terms of minus three in it. The bottom is a PST. X squared X, no X, no number in front of your X squared. Let me do them over here on the side. X squared minus 25. I try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. You ask yourself what times itself gives you X squared, and that would be X. And what times itself gives you 25, which would be 5. So you take what's inside your first parentheses, you add what's in your last. Take what's inside your first, and you subtract what's in your last. So the top part factors as x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now the bottom part, PSD. We take our number at the end, which is 40, and we're going to create our three columns. P column, we write down all products, give us 40. We got 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 3, no, 4 times 10, 5 times 8. Add them. 1 plus 40 is 41, 2 plus 20 is 22, uh, 14, 13. Subtract them, smaller from larger. 40 minus 1 is 39, 20 minus 2 is 18, 10 minus 4 is 6, 
and 8 minus 5 is 3. The word number we're looking for is number in our middle term, which is 13, which is right here. So we're going to use 5 and 8. So I got 5 and 8. Now our larger number in the P column, which is the 8, is always going to be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. The number I circled over here is in the S column, S for same sign, so if this one's positive, then this one has to be positive. Step 2, cancel if possible. Well, here's X plus 5, here's an X plus 5. So it's going to cancel. And we get X minus 5 over X plus 8. Now it looks like we can cancel the X's, but again, not, not everything's multiplication. This is minus and this is a plus. Has to be multiplication before you can cancel. So that's actually our answer. And I believe the end of that section. Yep. So let me stop the recorder.